What's up, feet users? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm on F123 and I'm going to stir up the world of racing. Like many Americans, I have been paying attention to Formula One for a solid few months now and the same guy wins every single race. If you don't already know, I'm talking about da 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 Max Verstappen. To be honest, I love his personality and I'm a bandwagoner, so naturally I'm a fan, but it feels very similar to the KD Warriors. Everyone's fighting for second place and it doesn't seem fair. So that's where I'll be stepping in. I have a few hours of game time on all F1 games ever, but I will be doing whatever it takes to put an end to this madness and give the other drivers a shot at the championship. So first of all, we have to pick our character and wow, that was easy. I scroll one position right and I'm in love. I don't even need to see what other options I have. Let me introduce to you from the Philippine, first name Sum, last name Ting Wong. I turn now. Good luck, everybody else. <laughs> I'm not planning on earning my way into F1. It's 2023, I'm going to force my way in purely off diversity. And when it comes to which team I'm going to join, I'm tempted to be teammates with Max, but I also don't care about the quality of my car. So I'm gonna be signing with AlphaTauri. I have to pick my teammate, which is a tough decision because I'm a fan of Daniel Ricardo, but I can't turn down a fellow Asian. So I'll be keeping Yuki Sonoda around. Right away, we get a cutscene in which they are talking about how unbeatable Max Verstappen is, but little do they know what tricks I have up my sleeve for this season. For my first Grand Prix, I did take the time to practice and qualify. I easily won the pole position, not because of my driving skills, but because of the difficulty I'm playing on. Max is starting in fifth, so I'll have to watch my back for him. Literally after the first turn, I slowed down and waited for him to catch up. Somehow he is already in second, so I have some catching up to do. We're going to stick with the lines for a bit, try to hit the apex legends, go off the track and T-bone him at 140 miles per hour. Somehow I didn't split his car into two pieces, but I threw him so far off the course that he's now in last place and apparently I'm being disqualified. I have a lot to learn if I want to make an impact on this season. I thought I might've screwed up on this one, but Max did not manage to win. Lewis Hamilton came out on top and Max did didn't even score points. All right, race number two, and I've got a bit of a different approach. I'm in dead last, going the wrong way down a straightaway. I'm looking for Max, but oh God, I missed and might have killed Perez. Thankfully, they give you redos in this game, so the cartel's not gonna behead me. I was trying to scout out a better head-on-head -head collision position, but I was given the blue flag, so I'm supposed to slow down, and what is this idiot doing? Max just rear-ended me and took us both out of the race. I knew he was competitive, but wow, he is already trying to beat me at my own game. For the Australian Grand Prix, I took a break from my usual strategy and actually drove a fairly clean race. Honestly, I was looking for some practice and I needed to ensure that I finished with more points than Max by the end of the season. So I just did some F1-ing. I also really love this track. All the turns felt really wide and easy. I was having a good time until I was forced into having a wet t-shirt contest on the podium. I may make more money off the lawsuit following that incident than I do for my career earnings, but game is game. I made it to my first sprint in Azerbaijan, which I didn't know was a thing. I thought I was showing up to qualify. Instead, I started in dead last in a four lap race, but I took this challenge on as another opportunity for improvement. I made some pretty clean moves while fighting my way up to the front. I may have cut some corners and ran a few people off the track, but Rubin's racing. And before I knew it, I was only a few positions behind my target, but also in the last lap, so I had to act quickly. Without any hesitation or breaks, I ran Max into the wall at 200 miles per hour. I wasn't even sure if that was for points or not, but I couldn't afford the risk. But even better, apparently the sprint acts as the qualifying for the Grand Prix. And now Max is starting dead last behind something Wong. I was going to try to speed run this race and take him out on the first turn with a fundamental rear end, but that Red Bull is a fine piece of engineering. So take two, we're restarting this race and I am just going to be an absolute bully towards Max. I fought him tooth and nail for the inside line, but we both ended up going off the track on turn one. Max was able to pass me, but I was right behind him, ready to slipstream past him or just run him into the barriers. And I might have actually murdered him. <laughs> Uh, oh, never mind. He's fine. He'll be okay. But he is out of the race, and somehow my little AlphaTauri is fine. So with no other clear goals in mind, I went for the next best thing. I more or less caught up to the other Red Bull and pulled off the same trick on Checo. 
And now the only possibility of any Red Bull related racer scoring today lies in the hands of Yuki Tsunoda, which of course did not happen. Next up is Miami, which has this beautiful and deadly long straightaway. My first thought was to try a pit maneuver at over 200 miles per hour. I took out both of us in one go, but I wasn't satisfied with that result. My next idea was to wait at the end of the straightaway and drive head into Max, but Pastry Boy over here wasn't looking where he was going. He rear-ended me and took him and a few others out of the race, which resulted in a red flag. After some time in the pits, I got back out to my position at the end of the straightaway, turned myself around, fought off the game trying to correct my driving, and made perfect contact with Max. Alonzo was kind enough to sandwich Max with me, but that's also going to take him out of this session. And somehow, my car is fine. I don't know what my engineers are doing behind the scenes, but I feel like I'm driving a tank. For some reason, I had to serve a penalty in my next pit stop, but with four drivers out of the race, all I have to do is finish, and worst case scenario, I end up in 16th. But finishing is the last thing on my mind. I have been on a roll in this one and I want to keep setting the bar higher. That's right. I'm looking at you, safety car. Come and get it. Ah, apparently you can't crash into the safety car. That's no fun. Well, it's time to move on. So I'm going to take one more driver out on my way out. And oh, look, it's Lewis Hamilton. Are you okay? That was a big And finally, I can see evidence of my hard work paying off after this one. We have put Haas on the podium, even Yuki scored some points today, but to be fair, only 12 cars made it past the finish line. After this one, they asked me who I consider my rival, which wasn't a very tough decision, considering I'm really only familiar with one driver. Hmm, we've got Max Verstappen, Valtteri Bottas, or Xiao Guanya. I don't know the point behind this, but I'll take Max. Next up, we're in Italy. I have the pole position and Max is starting in third, so it didn't take long for him to catch up. He still has the nerve to pass me, so I had to teach him another lesson. We did some off-road racing together. He fought me off by sending pebbles into my face. But by the time we did get back onto the road, we were more than five seconds behind 18th place. He ended up gaining some ground on me, but I saw this nice hard turn coming up and it seemed like a great time to have a helicopter come out onto the track. But no, a 200 mile per hour team T-Bone took my car out of the race, but not Max's. But too bad for him. I have figured out flashbacks by now. Here we go again. And oh my God, I'm just hurting myself on this turn. I'm not even sure if I got him. But after video review, you can see after this solid contact that sent me well into the air, Max went flying into the wall at a slight angle, which will remove one of his tires and end the race for him. Next up is Monaco, which I have heard a lot of fuss about before, and I was excited to give it a try, but it didn't take long for me to realize I am not built for this. This track is bullshit. It's made for bicycles, not cars. I totaled my car before the race even started. So when the race did start, I was not messing around. I made it around all the stupid little turns, found myself a nice little camping spot and waited for Max. Here's the front of the pack. Max is in six. I have a perfect exit. Not gonna lie, this part of the track is pretty cool, but this next turn is above my capabilities. So I'm just going to rear end him into the walls or Lando. That works works too. They're both out of the race. My car is fine. There's a red flag, but to be honest, my work here is done and I'm done dealing with this track. So I'm voluntarily retiring. My brain cells needed a break after this one. I think we're in Spain. I really don't know, but something tells me Amazon sponsors this. I'm going for my fastest finish yet. Coming up on turn one, I find the apex and pit max. My car is finished, but I'm not certain Max is. I look back at a sad perspective of Max and thanks to the Ferrari, his front left tire came out of place and that's another DNF for the both of us. In this next one, I was a little off my game. I've never seen this track before, so I didn't know what to expect. And the best I could do is rear end Max on the first lap. Max was even gaining some distance on me, but it looks like he's retiring. I'm still gonna hit him. I ruined my car. I'm on top of him and he just disappeared. Okay, so apparently I hit him on his way into the pit lane, but that's not a problem. I have no issue waiting for him. At this point in the season, I was getting tired of qualifying, but it really doesn't matter where I start on the grid because A, I'm not afraid of getting lapped, and B, I'm willing to put my body on the line for the good of the sport. I patiently waited for Max while dealing with several FIA warnings, but I clipped him good. He sent me flying. Once again, poor Alonzo was collateral in this collision. Yeah, I was airborne, but my car's fine because I have tires on it. We've been preparing for this at AlphaTauri. But Max is out, so I'm no longer needed here. I'll just be sending this bad boy 
into the nearest wall I can find. Apparently, I almost died for a sprint race, but it all works out because the Grand Prix itself was a rainy one, and I'm not interested in taking on that challenge. So with Max right in front of me, I decided to see how far up the pack we could go together. We peaked at 9th and 10th place, which was a solid start, but I don't remember him driving a dual wheel, so I think he's finished for the day, and so am I. But in this next race, I had a breakthrough moment. I messed up the start of the race by heading out early, but I never realized that was an option. That means I can just instantly catch up to Max no matter where either of us qualify and immediately get to ruining his race? And I guess all the bullying I've done to him this season is really starting to get to him. All I did was throw him off the course and slow him down with some illegal driving and he just pulls off to the side and quits. I might have finally broken him. I can finally do some carefree, relaxing driving with barely any damage to my car. Which ended ended up in me taking out Perez with a brake check. They had to send out the safety car after that incident, but I thought I'd take some of the load off of that hard working man and act as a safety car for everyone in 12th place and behind. Eventually, the actual safety car caught up, so they decided to abandon me after all my hard work. But hey, now I'm pretty much fighting for first place. Lewis did a solid job avoiding me, but I was able to make some contact on his side, so I'm just going to send him into the walls. But no, wow, okay, I did not see that coming. He turned into a ghost car, and I ended up sending myself into the wall. Oh no, I'm starting in last. Max is all the way in second place. How will I ever catch up to him? Let me just squeeze by all of you guys and slow this man down. Max wants to fight me for the inside line? Not happening. You can't bully something, Wong. And oh my goodness, this is getting a bit sad. He quit again, even though the race just started. Welp, I'm exiting this race with a bang one way or another. MFD, if you want to go and check it out. Okay. Are you okay? That was a big one. Confirm you're okay, please. We've got a sprint up first, and I try to wrap these up as quickly as possible, and I really set the bar high in this one. I sent Max into the back of Lewis on turn one, and he's finished. From here, I was just trying to take myself out of the race, but Leclerc wasn't watching the road, so he rear-ended me while I only had three tires. At this point, I might be one of the best dirty drivers in this game. I have turned taking out Max's tires into an art form. It doesn't get much cleaner than this. And I don't know what's scarier for the other racers, me cheating the starting line or not cheating it. Because if I don't, that means I'm turning around on them. It may have took me a couple tries, but I found Max on the straightaway. Lewis was kind enough to help me out. Zhao somehow didn't see my sideways car in the middle of the track, and I also took out two more behind me passing by. All in all, that will give me a record-breaking total of six DNFs in one collision. We've got another rainy race and a safety car on the track, which definitely wasn't my doing. But safety isn't in my vocabulary. That's right, boys. The bun is in the oven. I sent Max into the wall and once again he's retiring even with a mostly functioning car and i guess i'll take one more driver with me on my way out and that lucky man is gonna be my teammate yuki sonoda we are two-thirds through the season and here is how the standings are shaping up mercedes has been dominant and at the moment lewis is leading in the driver's standings by 13 points the ferraris are third and fourth followed by checo in fifth Max is in 17th place, which is good, but the fact that he's still outperforming three drivers while only finishing one race is just embarrassing. Singapore is another tough race for my talents, but I had an excellent start and quickly caught up to Max. He actually was fighting back, but we both ended up missing this turn. I maintained the lead on him, so I pulled off an expert level move by clipping the barrier and sending parts of my car back into his face. I was having fun riding his ass, and I thought I was about to finish him by sending him into this wall, but apparently I was fighting him into the pit lane. I'm surprised he hasn't given up by now, but it's even more impressive that he's continuing to fight back and willingly miss turns with me. I knew he was coming in for another pit stop here, so I decided to take my time coming into it, which as far as I know is clean and safe racing. He came in for a third pit stop in just four laps, and again, he wants the smoke today. He rams into me at the entrance, but honestly, it's been hard to stop him today, and his mechanics are working overtime, so I had to switch up my strategy. I went back to the old reliable of finding an open spot next to a straightaway and looking to hit him head on. And I did just that. I caught him slipping right next to the wall, took out his tires, eliminated him, and the Alphatari is once again a tank. 
If I can keep replicating this move, I might be able to finish this race by myself. Leclerc had a huge gap on everyone else, but let's see how he enjoys a gap in his spine. I'm trying to set this move up again, but what is Lando doing? Does no one pay attention around here? He's out, I'm fine, and here comes Alonzo who just rams into Leclerc and we've got a red flag. I could have put myself back into this race, but instead I went back to my same spot to make sure this race remains fair. Hamilton had a huge lead, so I took him out with the exact same move. But while backing out, I took out an Alpine, I messed up my flashback, and it was impossible to come out of this position alive. But with the amount of cars that I see crashing on this ending, I'll be happy to call it a day. And once again, another excellent performance by Sumting Wong ends up in another unexpected podium. We have the second Haas podium of the season and a first time podium for the Alfa Romeo. And even better, Yuki finished in six, which is by far his best performance of the season. And we also have an American flag in the top 10. See how fun F1 would be if they would just allow one rogue driver per season? I don't think I can top Singapore, but this next track has a nice underpass that will allow me to hide my collisions from the FIA. I was trying to set myself up under it, but once again, I accidentally took out Lando. And I guess we're just gonna leave his tire there? Oh, oh, sorry, Ferrari. Uh, Leclerc, get out of the way. Da, 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 da. There's first stop, and you and me, pal, let's go. No, okay, never mind. For some reason, there's a red flag. We come back and Verstappen is in second place with only six laps to go, which is unacceptable. I need to fight for every position. This is my line, Max. What are you doing? Yep, I'm flying through the air. This is not good. Up next, we have a sprint. And once again, Ocon is in the crossfire. He actually cucked me from taking him out there, but I was still able to bring us all the way to last place. And now that he's all alone and vulnerable, I was able to take him out on the next sharp turn. But the following Grand Prix might be some of my finest work yet. There's so much space off to the left of turn one in Qatar that I thought at a minimum I could ensure we get lapped off this turn alone. So I push him off the track. Max turns off to the left. I hit a sick drift because this isn't my first rodeo. But Max went so wide he ends up going the wrong way long enough that he is disqualified from the race. That man's probably at an all-time low right now, but there's no way I'm going to race in these temperatures if my main competition is out this early. So I found the closest wall and headed straight for it. I get off to another great start in Austin. Max thinks he will too, but little does he know I am already on top of his every move. I try sending him into the ever so helpful Ferraris on turn one. Somehow he survives. He thinks he can run, but the pastry is ready for him on the left and they both are done for the day. This is a sprint, so there's no need to follow the apex here. I have places to be and I guess we'll get some payback on Ocon for saving Max earlier. I came upon another approach to stopping Max in the Austin Grand Prix that being carbon monoxide poisoning. I'm just casually sitting here pumping 13,000 revs straight at his face and you can visually notice the brain damage is kicking in already. After creating a large gap between us and 18th place, I decided it was time to test Max's skills again. I put him in a similar position that Lewis Hamilton was in earlier where he baited me into running into a wall. Max fought hard to push me left, but eventually he had to break. In Mexico, I tried to team up with Max and pull off a shake and bake early in the race. I got him all the way up to 13th, but he started to fight back against my speed boost. So once again, I'm gonna throw him into the wall. Wow, that was a heck of an impact. Let me know you're okay. In Brazil, I was battling him for 19th place, but he tried going wide on me and I was not having any of that. I'm getting awfully good at destroying other drivers' cars while also keeping mine functional, but 100% tire damage usually means that tire is somewhere down the street, so I feel like the game just rewarded me for my bad behavior here. Once again, screw you, Ocon, for getting in my way. I ended up so far away from the pack, I got bored and started taking down all the signs. No free ads around here. And Lewis, I don't know what you're doing in 17th place, but let's fix that. Yep, that works. And Lance Stroll just won a Grand Prix. This is the world I live in. We're in Vegas, and I took this race weekend fairly seriously. I had pole position, but apparently you're not allowed to take out other drivers in qualifiers, so they bumped me back to six. But I had my fun in qualifiers, and I did my scouting report. And what I found out is that this orange barrier here is to indicate to me that this is the perfect position for me to ruin this race.
And after the second to last race of the season, George Russell secured the driver's championship. But to be fair, I might have targeted Lewis Hamilton a lot more than him throughout the season. But my job here is truly done. I have given the other drivers more or less a fair opportunity to showcase their talents, and it's led to a much more competitive year. And with one last race left in the season, I guess I can just drive. After getting a pretty decent start to the race, I tried my best to be a clean driver for once and play the game the way I'm supposed to. I had almost a seven second gap on second place going towards the checkered flag, but it's hard to break old habits. I'm going to be a real stand up guy here and pass on the win. I checked to see what place Max is in, seventh? Yeah, he thinks he's gonna score on this season finale? No, you don't. Oh God, I'm seeing double the Red Bulls are trying to trick me. Why are we piling up? Go around me, you dumb bitches. Or yeah, you know, we can just wait here. Verstappen is in 11th. That's perfect. Let me just sprint to the finish line and get my two points. From 20th to 1st to 10th, I still get driver of the day. But here are the final driver standings. Something Wong finished 16th with 28. Max finished in 17th from just his one fair race of the season. Yuki, Sergeant, Zhao, whatever. I don't even know what you're doing here. But that'll do it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if they should free Josh Giddy in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next one.